There is a terrifying possibility about finding life on other planets. Because even if we discover them, even if we come in peace, interstellar civilizations may be eradicating other life the moment they learn of them out there in the universe. Or as Liu Cixin calls it, the dark forest problem. Imagine you are a hunter creeping through a forest trapped in perpetual night. Shadows hide all kinds of danger. Is that a tree creaking or a footstep? An insect or a cock of a gun behind you? Each night, you hunt for food, scrounging what you can. You know there are other hunters in the forest, probably hungry and searching, just like you. Only you don't know where they are. You think about calling out into the dark, lighting a fire bright enough that others might come to you, sending out a radio signal. You could work together to help each other survive, but just as you open your mouth, you stop. You don't know how friendly the other hunters are. In fact, calling out would just let them know where resources were, your little camp, what little you have. And did it reveal your location to them without you knowing where they are? So you close your mouth and stay silent. Suddenly, you see a dark, muddy boot through the foliage in the distance. Another hunter. Your heart leaps at the sight of another person, but if they know you're there, they might kill you the instant they spot you. How do you figure out if they're friendly, knowing that speaking to them could end in your death? Them pulling a gun before you can even explain yourself? You can't. All you know is they have a little camp of their own. More food, more water, supplies for another day. So you stay hidden for a while. But you know they're getting closer to finding you. So, you raise your rifle, press your eye to the scope. Dark Forest Theory says every civilization is that armed hunter and the universe is that dark forest, constantly wiping each other out. This idea has been explored by various authors and scientists like David Brin in his 1983 paper The Great Silence or Fred Saberhagen's Berserker series, but it was really launched into the public consciousness with this book. And it's one of the best sci-fi pieces I've perhaps ever read. Now, you probably know the first book a bit better, The Three-Body Problem. It's got a Netflix series coming, it won the Hugo Award, but The Three-Body Problem feels like a YA novel once you get to the Dark Forest. This is the story that Liu Cixin wanted to tell. And if you don't want it spoiled, do not watch this video. Comment down below that you're gonna go get it and then go read it. Dark Forest Theory is built on two axiomatic propositions. First, the survival of the fittest, and second, civilizational expansion. That everyone, all throughout the universe, continuously grows and expands, but the resources in the universe remain constant. Because of this, if we find other life, be it an animal or a monster or another hunter or life we barely recognize, there are only three options. Hide, in the dark foliage, reveal yourself and pray for their mercy, or raise your rifle and fire. In this forest, hell is other people, firing on each other for fear that they'd do the exact same thing the moment they learned of you. The whole dilemma is comically about whether people wake up and choose violence. Now, you might think the hunter could call out, reveal themselves, explain they mean no harm, we come in peace. And that might work on Earth, where we can throw our hands up or talk or can resolve our fears quickly to prevent annihilation. But Liu says revealing yourself to the universe is just too damn dangerous because of two big differences. The chains of suspicion and technological explosion. In this book, there is a horrific moment called the Battle of Darkness. In it, a fleet of ships flee into space to escape a catastrophe I won't spoil, aiming to set up life elsewhere in the stars before they realize their resources are limited and their best chances of survival are a preemptive strike on the other ships. Because they don't know what all those other people are thinking. They don't know if they're paranoid or violent just like them and they need resources to survive. Some people must die or everyone will die. This is the unwinnable dead hand that space has dealt for the survival of Starship Earth. The string is about to snap. Since it's all the same, no matter who pulls it, why not pull it ourselves? They turn on each other in the depths of space. So we can think of it like this. If we know an alien civilization is paranoid or violent, then our best option becomes that first preemptive strike, like in the Battle of Darkness. But let's say we think they might be nice. We could get along. Well, what if they think that we would kill them on first sight? Then they would strike first, and that means our only option again is to strike first, duh. Or if they think that we're paranoid, or if they think that we think that they're paranoid, then it all comes back to that preemptive strike. We're too suspicious of the other. 
but we could raise our hands and communicate our peaceful nature. But no, Liu says that space is different. We are the same species on Earth and more likely to understand each other. Civilizations are not isolated from each other. They can exchange and discuss many things that they do not understand. This opportunity does not exist between interstellar civilizations. Unlike in a real forest, communication over the vast distances of space is slow, or perhaps even impossible. I spoke about this in my video on the compatibility problem, that we may not be able to communicate with alien life because of how vastly differently we work. We have no shared language, we have no shared experiences, and while dialogue and peace requires continuous effort to craft and maintain, all it takes is one risk-averse faction to irreparably pull the trigger. Especially because interstellar warfare favours weapons which can wipe out planets. Of the three options, firing simply has a lower barrier. All of this is the chain of suspicion that makes revealing yourself dangerous and firing that rifle more likely. And it might be difficult to imagine a universe so full of life that's so paranoid and fixated on conquest and survival, but David Brennan's paper offers that a dark forest wouldn't even require many civilizations to choose the preemptive strike. Suppose that for every 100 or 1000 or 10,000 sane alien civilizations, there is one that is xenophobic, paranoid even. Such a race might program its self-replicating emissaries to home in on any unrecognized source of radio signals. It would need only happen once for the results of this scenario to become the equilibrium condition of the galaxy. We would not have detected extraterrestrial radio traffic because all were killed shortly after discovering radio. If there is even a 1% chance that communicating with other intelligent life could lead to our immediate destruction, is that really worth the risk? The fact that human signals have now traveled over 200 light years and reached over a thousand stars and countless planets means we don't know who could have heard us. But what if we find a civilization that's in the Stone Age? They're not a threat. Well, Liu says again that that's not a reason to spare them because of that second reason, technological explosion. Human civilization has 5,000 years of history, but modern technology was developed over the course of 300 years. On the scale of the universe, that's not development, it's an explosion. But there's no reason why humanity should be the fastest. And my knowledge of your existence and the information I received from our communication was the perfect spark to set off that explosion. That means even though I'm just a newborn or growing civilization, I'm still a big danger to you. One day, I'll be able to find you. With the vast distances of space, an interstellar missile or fleet might take hundreds of years to reach you, by which time you could have developed technology to counter them entirely. With this chance of failure, every second you allow another civilization to continue, they become more of a danger, and revealing yourself becomes more dangerous in the first place. And if you found them, then one day they will find you, and all of this only leaves you with one real option. Pull the trigger. How ever? The Dark Forest offers a very compelling, if grim, theory of how the universe works. But, the two axioms that it's based on can be a bit misleading. Yes, survival of the fittest will play a role in alien evolution, and perhaps in the sociology of the universe at large. But that does not mean that violence is the only or even most popular option. On the contrary, humans have succeeded evolutionarily because we are social creatures. Cooperative communities survived better. If we are applying evolutionary motifs to the cosmos, then it equally makes sense that even if we are in a dark forest, it's the hunters who work together that survive. In fact, firing on a social group will be punished more efficiently, meaning the universe itself might select for socialization. Dark forest theory supposes it only takes one malicious civilization to mean silence or violence is the only option, but that's a little like murdering everyone you see or staying hidden in your home because you know there's a serial killer somewhere out there who would try to jump you. And while survival might be a fundamental driver of civilization, that is not the same thing as expanding or thriving. Studies estimate human populations might plateau around 10.9 billion in 2100, and not because we'll run out of space, mind you, but based on fertility rates and other demographic factors. As countries get wealthier, healthcare gets more sophisticated, people consistently have fewer children. And we don't need to avoid that. That is not an existential threat. Continual expansion is not guaranteed. And while the resources in the universe may be finite, if continual expansion is not guaranteed, then conflict 
is not inevitable. The Battle of Darkness was a unique circumstance where people made those decisions to survive, not to expand and thrive. And the choice to destroy other civilizations is also built on two faulty assumptions that Liu nor Bryn never really addressed. One, uh, that if you decide to wipe someone out, you have to know you can do it with 100% certainty. And two, that you can hide yourself in the process of doing this, given revealing yourself is so dangerous. Given these are near impossible to know, you actually raise your chances of your own destruction exponentially by firing on other civilizations who may not have been inclined to use a preemptive strike in the first place. And while Liu argues that revealing yourself is so dangerous because we do not have a shared language or experience to resolve disputes, if it is so dangerous, then revealing yourself also indicates that you have not chosen violence. Restraint is a shared language we can use. We may well live in a brightly lit forest. It's because of all this that though I love this book, this theory, it's great sci-fi, it's a great place for a story, I'm actually inclined to believe a different kind of great filter is the reason the universe is so quiet. Is this an ad? Yeah. Am I getting paid for it? No, I, I wish I was. I just love this book and you will too. And by the way, Death's End, the final book in the series, is even further up its own ass of weird sci-fi concepts. If this video does well, by the way, I would love to do more of them. Uh, let me know what kind of concepts you'd like me to discuss. I'd love to go into like really niche stuff that, you know, hasn't been touched on. Do you believe in the dark forest or do you have another idea for why the universe is so quiet? Let me know down in the comments below. Anyway, stay nerdy, you know, go buy my books, Patreon, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, blah, 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 money, money, money. Those are all the things that I need to cover for the job. Uh, stay nerdy and I will see you in the future. Thank you.